Shalom, 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 shalom. As always, first I want to give you the praises and the glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Raka Kodash. Yahweh is the name of the Most High. Bahasham, Raka Kodash. Yahweh is the name of the Most High. Yahweh Shai is the name of the, of the Son. God bless to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone. I'm just checking the sound because I did this video yesterday and for some reason the sound didn't come out on it. I don't know why the sound didn't come out, but um, that's why you hear the echo in there. So I'm just checking the sound today to make sure the sound didn't come out on it. I'm just making sure, as you can hear, the sound is coming out today. But um, that's why you hear the echo in there. So I'm just checking the sound. So the sound is coming out today, which is good, because I really kind of brought out some beautiful scriptures with this video yesterday, and for some reason, the sound didn't work. I ain't sure what it was. I'm not sure what caused the sound not to come out, but it seems to be coming out clear today. I've just checked myself, and I hope you guys can hear me as well. If you can, just give me a thumbs up that you can hear me. Um, so today's edification comes from the book of Psalms, King David. He maketh my feet like hind's feet and setteth me upon my high places. Now, when you see, I'm going to show you a quick two minute video. When you see how these goats move on the mountain, you'll understand why we're calling this that. Why we're actually calling this. Today's edification, he maketh my feet like hind's feet and setteth me upon high places. And I want you to see how these goats move up this dam. It is, this is a parable that King David spoke about concerning the powers that the Israelites are going to possess and certain powers that he had during the days of King David and the 37 mighty men. Okay. So just watch how these goats move up this dam here, right? I mean, this is this is what I said, the most high boy. He, 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 he is. That's why his name is he is, or he is to be. Yahweh. He is. He just is everything. There's nothing that's out of his reach. The beauty of his works. And this is another example of the beauty of his works. This is why King David said that. He makes my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon high places. It's a parable to symbolic to the sort of powers that the children of Israel are going to possess in the kingdom. There's nothing that we're not going to be able to do. But just watch how these goats move up this dam. There's a strong bond between mother and kid. And the kid will follow her wherever she goes. The Ibex eventually make it to the prize. Salt from the earth, dissolved in water, 
continues on its journey into their bodies. Where it's used in the nerves and muscles that control dexterous pincer-like hooves. Vital ingredients carried around by a simple molecule with remarkable properties. So, as you could see, I mean, it's a, it's marvelous. It's, it's absolutely marvelous. Truly. So this is what King David was referring to, basically. This is what he was actually referring to, King David. So he says here in the book of Psalms, and I want to start from, I want to start a little a few verses up. Start from verse 30, right? He says, and as for you, and as for the powers, his way is perfect. The word of your power is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. For who is the power that saves? Yahweh. Or who is a rock that saves our power? It is the power that girdes me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like hind feet and setteth me upon my high places. He teaches me, he teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by my arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand has holden me up, and thy gentleness has made me great. And this is what the Lord is coming to do again. He's coming to make Israel great again. He's coming to make the children of Israel, starting with the remnant, great again. I want to go to the book of Isaiah 41, verse 10. It says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. With who? With Israel. And in these last days, the Lord is specifically speaking about the remnant of Israel. Be not dismayed, for I am thy power. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. All of the nations, and that's even including in, even the two-thirds of Israel, <laughs> the wicked two-thirds of the Israelites that are not going to make it out of Babylon the Great. And the Israelites that are not going to make it from around the world. Because it's not just in Babylon where Israelites are going to perish. It's just that two-thirds are going to perish in Babylon. But Israelites around the world are going to perish as well. Millions of Israelites around the world are going to perish as well. Truly understand this. But all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing... And they shall strive with thee, and, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them, and shalt not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that warred against thee shall be as nothing, and as a thing of naught. Because the Lord is getting ready to raise up the children of Israel, the remnant, to come up against these nations. And remember... The remnant that are going to be delivered are going to receive new bodies. So you're going to have powers beyond every, anything that we can imagine. There's a scripture that the Lord refers to. Let's see if I can quickly find it. It says, For I, the Lord, how thy power will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee says the Lord, Yahweh, 
and thy Redeemer, Yehoshai, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff. Now this is parabolic languages talking about the governments, the big governments, the small governments, the governments around the world. We're not going to be threshing mountains. <laughs> We're going to thresh governments. At the top of a mountain is a summit. Governments keep meetings which they refer to as the G7 summit or the G20 summit. We're going to be threshing governments and large governments, small governments from the four corners of the world. This is when I always speak about how the Lord and the angels and the 144,000 from the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes, are going to subjugate the nations. This is the work that the men are going to do, not the women. The women are going to live in glory to witness this. The women are also going to have spiritual powers. The children are going to have the children are going to have spiritual powers. The women are going to be immortal. The men are going to be the children are going to be immortal. But it's the men that are going to be leading this this war against the nations when the Lord and the angels come back. Now the Bible speaks about some of these men receiving these powers even before the Lord comes back. But we're going to focus on the powers that the men, the 144,000 from the 12 tribes of Israel, are going to receive to take down these nations. We're going to have powers beyond anything. Um, there's a scripture I'm thinking of. One second. One second. Um, This is Matthew Matthews. John, hold on. Book of John, chapter 14, I believe. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is here. Yeah. This is the book of John, chapter 14, verse 12. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking, as you can see, it's in red. And this is what you must understand when we talk about these powers that we're going to possess in the kingdom. We're going to have spiritual powers beyond anything that, that we could even imagine today. Now, the Lord is telling you, telling the Israelites this here. Right? He's telling the disciples, the apostles this. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So he that believes in Yahweh Shai is the Son of the Most High. For those of us that truly believe that Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, have repented, converted, come back to our true faith and our belief in our culture, which is the scriptures, the Bible. The Lord says, he that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. So all the things that Yahweh Shai was able to do when he was walking the earth, we're going to be able to do those works in the kingdom. Now you think about what the Lord could do. He could raise people from the dead. He can cure you of any disease. He could, he could uh, make your limbs grow back. If you had one arm or half a arm or... You lost your leg, you can just make it go right back to what it was. The Lord could cure you of any kind of ailment. You think about what the Lord was able to do. So all of the works that he was able to do, all of the miracles and works that the Lord was able to do, the Lord calmed the oceans where he was on the boats with the disciples and the oceans and the sea was coming in and raising up and the disciples were getting scared. And the Lord just spoke to the ocean and just calmed it down completely. You can walk on water. So all of the things that the Lord was able to do, we're going to be able to do also. And also, and greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto my Father, and whosoever ye shall ask 
in my name. That will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in, what's the key here, family? In my name. What's the Lord's name? Yahweh Shai. His name is not Jesus Christ. It's one of the things that we must truly remember. The Lord's name is Yahweh Shai, not Jesus Christ. So he says, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments we always stress to follow the laws commandments and statutes to the best of your ability you're not going to be able to follow every single law and commandment and statute that's what grace is there for that's what the lord is there for in the kingdom we're going to be programmed we're going to the laws commandments and statutes are going to be part of our dna go to the book of hebrews chapter 8 verse 14 it makes it quite clear it's going to be part of our inward parts we're not going to be teaching our fellow brothers, say, come ye, come learn the laws, because we're all going to know it, know the laws from the least of us to the greatest of us in the kingdom. But now we're just rehearsing the righteous acts. We do it to the best of our ability. We know the ones that we can do. And when we do mess up, we pray to Yahweh Shai. In my name, he says, anything you ask in my name, I will do it. We pray to Yahweh Shai for forgiveness. But the powers that we are truly going to possess in this kingdom, right, to wage this war against the nations, because all of us are going to have these powers, different, probably different levels of powers amongst us. The women are going to have spiritual powers. The children are going to have, the men, the 144,000. You see, in the kingdom, what we must truly understand, right, if we go to Revelations chapter 7, When it talks about the 144,000, this is going to be the ruling government in the kingdom. Above that is going to be the 12 disciples. Remember the Lord spoke about, uh, judging the 12 tribes, judging the 12, I think it was in the book of Luke. Above the, uh, above the 144,000 are going to be the 12 apostles. That's why Yahweh says, and Yahweh says unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye that have followed me in the regeneration, the reincarnation, when the Son of Man, Yahweh shall sit on the throne of his glory, which is in Jerusalem, the kingdom of heaven coming to earth. Ye also shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So who is he speaking to? He's speaking to the disciples, right? They're going to be sitting on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes, right? He says there, then Peter, then Peter answered, and we just go up a verse, then Peter, then answered Peter, the head apostle, and said unto him, behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee what shall we have therefore so now the lord is telling the head apostle peter what they're gonna get in the kingdom that's coming to earth so yahweh says unto them to them to peter and the disciples verily i say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory in the kingdom of heaven coming to earth, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone that has forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands, for my name's sake, anyone that's forsaken, I've given up these things for the Lord's sake, shall receive a hundredfold. And shall what? Inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last. And the last shall be first. So those that consider themselves that are in this thing for filthy lucre, for the money. Those that are coming to this truth to make money out of it. The scripture says, but many that are first shall be last. And the last shall be first. The last are going to be those that have truly forsaken their houses, their brethren, 
their sisters, their father, their mother or wife or children, lands, their property for my name's sake, for the name, for the, to, to do this work, to come back to Yahushai, to dedicate themselves, their life, their purpose to Yahushai, to usher in the kingdom of heaven on earth. So the 12 disciples are going to be judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Underneath the 12 disciples is going to be the 144,000. 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Whereas the 12 disciples are going to be sitting on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Now it could be one disciple over one particular tribe or just all 12 tribes. So just all 12 disciples as a council just judges all the 12 tribes are going to be over all the 12 tribes. But they're going to be above the 144,000. Now above the 12 tribes, sorry, above the 12 disciples is going to be, let's just quickly pull it out. Uh, so Amos, Amos 8, 8 and 9 or 9 and 8. I think it's Amos 9. Just so we understand. Uh, see, the restoration of Israel. So it says, In that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which is the 12 tribes of Israel, that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. So right now the Lord is raising up the 12 tribes of Israel, just a remnant of Israel. All right. Now the scripture that I actually wanted, I believe it's, hold on, let me just check the Bible. I believe it's in Jeremiah 30 or Jeremiah 16. So let's just quickly check the scriptures because I know if I open my Bible, I know exactly where it is. It's either Jeremiah 30 or Jeremiah 60. So, Jeremiah 30. Jeremiah 30. So, let's just even go straight to the point. Jeremiah 30. So, this is all going to take place after Jacob's trouble. <laughs> this is the kingdom, the kingdom being established, right? We start here. Jeremiah 30, verse 8. For it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and I will burst thy bonds, and strangers, the other nations, shall no more serve themselves of him. We're no longer going to be serving these other nations. But they shall serve Yahweh their power. And David, that's King David, their king, whom I will raise up unto them. So David. Is going to be raised up unto the children of Israel. So David the king, he is going to be above the 12 apostles, the 12 disciples, right? Because the Lord is going to raise up David, our king, in the kingdom. He's going to be sitting on his throne. He's going to be above the 12 apostles and above the 145,000, right? Um, hold on. Another one I want to quickly go to. So this is the hierarchy that's going to take place. Yahweh Shai on his throne. The twelve disciples on twelve on their twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Above them is King David and Yahweh Shai. Then it's going to be the hundred and forty-four thousand. Then under the 144,000, then we get the mixed multitude, a multitude from the tribulations. And after this I beheld, lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our power which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And the angels stood around the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped Yahweh. 
saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our power forever and ever. Amen. So we're going to have the mixed multitude that's going to come out of all nations. As we've always tell you, Israelites will look like the other nations as well when they get delivered. But when their bodies are changed, which we're going to go to next, then they're going to all come back looking like so-called Negroes, right? Of all nations, kindreds, people and tongues stood before the throne. Because Israel is scattered amongst the four corners of the world, amongst all of the nations, living amongst them. And you're going to have Israelites who look like these nations. Now, the scripture says here, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, this is how you know you're how shy. Is going to be head poncho in the kingdom. This is 1 Corinthians 15 and 24. Then comes the end, the end. This is when all is said and done. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to Yahweh. Who is the he? That's Yahweh Shai. Delivered that watch kingdom. Esau's kingdom. Because the Lord is coming to subjugate these Edomites. He's coming with Michael, the chief archangel. He'll have legions of angels with him as well. And he's going to raise up the 144,000 to play a part in that subjugation of the nations. It says, even the father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Who must reign? Yahweh Shai. Who are the enemies? All of the other nations. So the Lord's going to put an all rule and power and authority under his feet. The 144,000 are going to be what the Bible refers to as the first fruits. These are the first people that are going to get their bodies changed. So when he speaks about the mystery of the resurrection, he says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Can't inherit the kingdom of heaven that's coming to earth. Flesh and blood can't. Of the Israelites. <laughs> Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We're all going to be changed, but it's going to start with the first fruits, which are 144,000. These are the first. Because the angels are really going to have their angelic bodies. Michael, Michael, the chief archangel, is going to be coming in all of his glory and power. Yahweh Shai is going to have all of his glory and power. But the first fruits are going to be the 144,000. The scripture says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Our bodies are going to be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal body must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. So when we go back to Matthews and the Lord says here, verse 29, Matthews 19, verse 29, and everyone that's forsaken houses and brethren and sisters and father and mother and wife and children and lands for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and what and shall inherit everlasting life how are they going to get that from these new bodies for well, these corruptible bodies that we have must put on incorruption and these mortal bodies must put on immortality that's how we're going to get everlasting life but it's going to start with 144,000 before the mixed multitude the rest of the remnant, because all of these are considered the remnant of Israel. Before the rest of Israel, the remnant receive these immortal bodies. But it's going to start with the first fruits, 144,000. Now, the scripture also says, right? Hold on, let's get another tap up here. This is why we always tell you that many are called, right? Let me spell that right. 
Salawam to the Aki on the comment board. I'm going to come to your precepts. The scripture says in the book of Matthew 22 and 14, right? Let's just bring it up. For many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Who are the chosen? We quickly look at that word. What does that word chosen mean, right? Just to show you when we talk about the elect to understand. Many are called to this, to repentance. Many are called to this work, but not everyone's going to endure to the end. Strong's G, 1588, Eclectos. 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 That's why we always talk about the elect, the elect, the elect. The word eclectos just means the elect. If we go back to the Hebrew, to pick out, to choose, to pick out, to choose, out for oneself, choosing out of many, i.e. Yahweh Shai choosing his disciples, of Yahweh choosing whom he judged fit to receive his favors, and separated from the rest of mankind to be to be peculiarly his own and to be attended continually by gracious oversight as salvation, i.e. the Israelites, can only come from the Israelites, from no other nation. It says of God and the Father choosing Christians, which can only be Israelite, Christians can only be Israelites. True Christians can only be Israelites. No other nation can be seen an Israelite. The word Christian just goes back to the to the to the to the Greek word Christos, which just means the anointed. The anointed were the children of Israel. The Israelites were first called Christians in a place called Antioch, right? That's where they got this tag from, this name, this byword from from the Romans. It says, as those whom he set apart from a religious multitude as dear unto him and whom he has rendered through the faith in, that's Yahweh Shai, citizens, see it there? Citizens in the Messianic kingdom. What's the Messianic kingdom? All right. That's the kingdom of heaven that's coming to earth. That's the promised land. Who are going to be the citizens? The remnant of Israel, those that are chosen. Many are going to be called to come back into this, but only the chosen. Now, the scripture talks about the deeds that we're going to do, the works that we're going to do. So when we go to Zechariah 9 here, the scripture says, When I have bent Judah for me, which is symbolic for the southern kingdom, filled the bow with Ephraim, which is symbolic for the northern kingdom. So these are the 12 tribes. And raise up thy sons, O Zion. Sons, O Zion, is the 12 tribes of Israel. Against thy sons, O Greece. This is symbolic for Esau, Edom, the Edomites. And made thee as a sword of a mighty man. So this is what the Lord is getting ready to do. To raise up the sons of Judah, starting with 144,000, and the sons of Ephraim, the northern and the, the southern kingdom, to come up against the sons of Esau, the Edomites. We're going to have these bodies these immortal bodies with these spiritual powers, greater powers than what the Lord had to take down these nations, to subjugate them and to keep them in order. Because remember, we're going to have to teach these nations the laws, the commandments and the statutes. Remember, I said this before and I say it again. Every single church, black church, Pentecostal church, Jehovah Witness church, Church of Latter-day Saints, Roman Catholic Church, Church of England, Protestant Church, every single mosque, every single house of worship, whether it's a Buddhist temple, a Sikh temple, a Hindu temple, a Scientology temple, every single one of those places are going to be destroyed. When the kingdom of heaven, and when we have these powers, these immortal bodies, and we have these powers, we're going to destroy every single so-called house of worship, every single synagogue that they worship in Judaism, every single mosque, every single Christian Catholic church is going to be destroyed. This is what's going to happen. None of these houses of worship, 
that belong to the other nations are going to exist. We're going to destroy every last one of them in the kingdom of heaven that's coming to earth. We're going to have the powers to do this. Now, to understand that, we go to Deuteronomy chapter 12. Because the laws, remember, the laws, commandments, and statutes are going to be are going to be instilled upon every nation. We're going to know them like the back of our teeth. It's going to be part of our DNA. We're not going to be teaching ourselves, the Israelites. But the other nations, we're going to have to teach them, and they're going to have to abide by them. Now, this is the laws of the sanctuary. Just so you understand, when I tell you that all these houses of worship are going to be destroyed. It says, these are the statutes and the judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land. Now, this was originally talking about the land. Why? Because originally the laws, commandments and statutes was only ever shown to Jacob. Remember, if we go to, if we go to Psalms 147, just so you can understand the context of what I'm going to read in Deuteronomy 12. Originally, the laws, commandments, statutes was only ever given to us. Psalms 147 verse 19. He shows his words unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He has not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. But when the kingdom of heaven is established on earth, the other nations are going to have to learn the laws, commandments and statutes. And then they're going to be judged by them as well. So when we go to Deuteronomy 12 and we read the laws of sanctuary, these are the statutes and judgments which you shall observe to do in the land. Originally just applied to us because originally the laws, as it stands now, was only ever given to Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel. It says, which the Lord, Yahweh, the power of thy fathers, giveth thee to possess it, the promised land, all the days that you lived upon the earth. It says, ye shall utterly destroy it all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods upon the high mountains and upon the hills and under every green tree. And ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods and destroy the names of them out of that place. So Jesus Christ is going to be destroyed as a name in the kingdom of heaven when it comes to earth. That name, Jesus Christ, that represents the Roman Catholic Church, the Black Church, Jehovah Witness, the Protestant Church, that represents so-called Christianity today is going to be destroyed. And every house of worship is going to be destroyed. Because these laws will apply to all of the nations in the kingdom. Right now, it only applied to the children of Israel because the Most High, just like we read here, he shows his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He has not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. But now, when the kingdom is established, all of these laws are going to apply to the kingdoms. So the Lord says here, you shall utterly destroy all of the places wherein the nations, all of the other nations, which we, which you shall possess, because we're going to possess all the other nations, right? Which you shall possess, serve their gods. Upon the high mountains and upon the hills and upon every green tree. We're going to overthrow their altars. We're going to break the pillars. We're going to burn the groves, the fire. We're going to destroy everything. We're going to hew down the graven images. Everything from the Kabbalah stone. To their, every single mosque, everything, their, their idols of Mary, white Jesus, and this and that, the Buddha, the Buddhist temples, the Sikh temples, we're going to destroy them all in the kingdom. Because the kingdom of heaven is coming to earth, and all of the nations are going to be ruled by the laws, commandments, and statutes. So these houses of worship are not going to be able to exist, because we're going to what? We're going to possess those nations. Remember, Isaiah chapter, chapter 14. We're going to possess them. Isaiah 14, verse 2. It says, and the, let's start with verse 1. It says, For the Lord Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel, and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. This is when the kingdom is going to be established. We're going to be going back to the promised land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. The strangers are the Israelite Gentiles. 
that are scattered amongst the nations. So the strangers will also make up the mixed multitude from the tribulation. They're going to be joined unto us because we're going to be gathering the Israelites from all of the nations from around the world that are not going to be in Babylon where it's going to be destroyed. We know two thirds are going to die in Babylon. We're going to be gathering them, the elect. They're going to receive their new bottles, their, their new bodies, right? So those are the strangers. They're going to be joined unto us. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants. Who are we going to possess? The other nations. <laughs> and for handmaids. So we're going to possess. And the house of Israel shall possess them. The other nations. Not the strangers. Not the Israelite Gentiles. The, the Gentiles of the actual other nations. In the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. So what is it, what did the Lord say here? Deuteronomy 12 and 2. You shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods. We're going to possess the nations in the kingdom. So where these laws are going to apply to the nations' houses of worship in the kingdom of heaven that's coming to earth. We're going to destroy every high mountain on every upon every high mountain. <laughs> upon every high hill you think of that big statue of white jesus on the high mountain in brazil we're going to destroy it i don't know which Israelite's going to get which one of the brothers is going to get the pleasure to destroy that particular idol but we're going to destroy it every green plant on every green tree we're going to overthrow their altars we're going to break their pillars we're going to burn their groves on fire we're going to destroy the whole lot because we're going to possess these nations in the kingdom the scripture says, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. <laughs> you understand? So we're going to destroy all of that. Now, if we jump to, where did I want to go to? Did I go to Zechariah 9? I did go to Zechariah 9. Oh, Jeremiah 51. Jeremiah 51 verse 19, it says the portion of Jacob, the remnant of Israel that are going to make it, is not like them. We're not like these other nations. <laughs> We're not like these nations. We're, we are God's chosen people. We are the most highest chosen. We're not like these other nations. We are Yahweh's chosen people, right? It says the portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord Yahweh of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. Why? For with thee will I break in pieces the nations. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. <laughs> and with thee, Israel, will I break in pieces the horse and his rider. And with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. Right? All of their... Because they're going to come with their weapons of war. We're going to destroy it all. With thee... Also will I break in pieces man and woman, and with thee will I break in pieces old and the young, and with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock, and with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen, and with thee will I break in pieces the captains and the rulers. We're going to have the powers to do this and remember it's going to be the men not the women the women are going to be living a life of riley in their palaces in the kingdom they're going to have their powers they're going to be raising their children but it's the men that's going to be doing this type of work the women are going to have their slaves in the kingdom doing their works for them everything building the kingdom it's going to be a beautiful time I truly understand this it's going to be a beautiful time when the kingdom is going to be built. The powers that we are going to possess, the Lord made it clear. The Lord made it clear about the powers that we are going to build, right? Well, I read this in John, John 14. Let's quickly go back to it. And the Lord made it clear, right, when he said... Uh, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me and the works that I do 
shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So the Lord told her, told the disciples, we're going to have greater powers than what he possessed when he was walking the earth. Greater powers. I mean, it's just beyond me what, what, what he's going to bestow upon us. And this is why this is all about enduring this to the end. We've got to endure this to the end. We've got to endure this to the end, family. I'm grab a few precepts from the brothers that put, put these precepts up here. Hold on. Yeah, it's a beautiful one. First Corinthians, brother David, first Corinthians chapter six, verse two. Do you not know that the saints, who are the saints, the saints are the Israelites, shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Beautiful, beautiful precept, brother. Truly, we're going to judge the world. And we're going to have the powers to do it. Ezekiel chapter 25, verse 12. Thus says the Lord God, Yahweh, because that Edom has dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and has greatly offended and revenged himself upon them, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Yahweh, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom, Babylon. And I will cut off man and beast from it, and I will make it desolate from Teman. And they of Dedan shall fall by the sword. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom. By who? By the hand of my people Israel. So we're going to take vengeance on these Edomites, starting with their most prized asset, Babylon the Great, the United States of America, also known as Edom, spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt, also known as the daughter of Babylon. The Lord says he's going to take vengeance upon Edom, the Edomites, so-called, so-called European white man, by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, says the Lord God, Yahweh. Oh, praises to Yahweh by Shimei Uh Let's just Luke 12 and 49 from the New Living Testament, right? I have come to set the world on fire. <laughs> And I wish it were already burning. And this is where we're at. We're at, the, we're at the point where the earth is not literally burning, but symbolically burning with wars, discontent, division, polarization. That's what we see going on around the world. Right? This is exactly what we see going around the world. Um, this is Psalms 82 verse 6. I have said... Ye are Allahayams, which are the powers, right? It was in English it would say gods. Allahayam is the Hebrew for powers. That's the angels are gods, their powers as well. It says, You are gods, you are Allahayam, and all of you are the children of the most high. Oh, praise to Yahweh by Shimi Shai. So we are the children of Yahweh by Shimi Shai, and we are truly. Allahayams, we are powers, but we don't have, the only powers we have now is the power to break down the scriptures <laughs> through the powers of the Holy Spirit, as we always speak about that. But soon we're going to possess the powers. The Lord says, is it Micah? Is it Micah? The scripture I'm thinking of, is it Micah chapter 4? This is I'm going to make you, is it Micah 4? See, I love that. Peaceful latter days. That's what we're heading for. We're heading for the peaceful latter days. But before, before the calm, the storm has to come before the calm. So we're waiting for the heart of the storm to reach Babylon, America. But the storm has began. The storm has began in Israel. But we're waiting for it to reach Babylon before we can get to those peaceful latter days. All right. Four thirteen. Yeah. Micah 4 verse 13, it says, Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion. Talking about the 12 tribes. For I will make thine horn iron, and I will make thy hoofs brass. 
like hinds feet <laughs> and thou shalt be in pieces many people and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord Yahweh and their substance unto Yahweh of Hashem Yahweh Shai of the whole earth. We're going to take everything that these demons have. We're going to take their wealth, not their FRMs, Federal Reserve um, money. We're going to take the silver and gold, the diamonds, the real, the real, real, real shit family. One more precept before we shut this down. Um, Micah chapter 5. The book of Micah is a beautiful book because it's mainly, look, the birth of the king in Bethlehem talks about that, but we're going to go to a future prophecy in here. Is it Micah 5 I want? Yeah. Micah chapter 5 verse 7. And the remnant of Jacob, the elect, the eclectos that we spoke about earlier, many are called, few are chosen, starting with the 144,000, the remnant of Jacob, the 144,000, shall be in the midst of many people as a Jew from the Lord Yahweh, as the showers upon the grass that tarriest not for man, nor waitest for the sons of men. And the remnant of Jacob, the elect, shall be among the Gentiles, the actual other nations, right? In the midst of many people, as a lion amongst the beasts of the forest, as a young lion amongst the flocks of sheep, who, if he go through, both treadest down and tearest in pieces, and none can deliver. No one's going to be able to deliver Esau and the other nations from this judgment. No one. No one. Thine hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries, the other nations, the heathens, and all thine enemies shall be cut off. Every single last one of them is going to be cut off. Praise the Arabashim Yahushai Bashim Kodash. So, Oh, let me grab this one more precept and then we're going to shut this down. Isaiah 46, verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. What better one to finish on? This is the most highest pleasure and it's going to stand. His counsel is going to stand. It's as simple as that. So he does. He's going to make my feet. He's going to make our feet like hinds feet <laughs> and set us me upon my high places. And we're going to get now. We're going to the top of knuckle of David is going to be the highest place ever in the kingdom. The Lord is getting ready to do this. We just got to endure this unto the end. Just like the scripture says, he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Right. Simple as that. So I pray you are edified, brothers and sisters. As always, I want to give all the praises and the glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakar, Kodash, the blunders to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone. As I always like to say, keep praying, keep safe, repent, and hold on to this truth because we are at the precipice of all of the Most High's works. Just like the scripture says, His counsel shall stand. And he will do his pleasure. It's his pleasure. We just got to endure this to the end. It's as simple as that. So, shalom, shalom, shalom. I hope you're edified by today's edification. As I always say, leave your comments in the comment board. If you've got any questions, by all means, just put them in the comment board of the video and I will definitely try and get back to you. Shalom, family.